Of all the ways to harness immense power in the game of Noita, the Quest of the Sunseed, a newly added series of events with an absolutely massive payoff, is perhaps the most impressive. Warning, this is a step-by-step -step guide to endgame content, so massive spoilers incoming. Our journey begins on the sunbaked surface of the desert, where we'll find a strange brickwork structure on which is engraved the image of a mushroom, along with two downwards pointing arrows. Digging straight down beneath the sand, we'll soon come face to cap with a large, curious stone sculpture of a mushroom with a narrow hallway on the right side. By stepping to the end of this hallway and partaking in a bit of fungus, the entire stone structure melts into rainbow liquid, leaving behind a map composed of fool's gold. In the center is this mushroom map room, above which are the pyramid and the mountain, and encircling these five mysterious structures, which we will now be traveling to, beginning with the one on the left, which happens to be in the fungal cavern west of the coal pits. There, resting atop an inverted brickwork triangle, we'll find the Book of Guidance. One of my brethren ran away in order to escape our predicament. They felt our understanding of this world was to be forbidden. They hid something here, in this room, but I lack the ability to truly see what is here. First of all, the one who ran away is almost certainly the one who left a note in the lake house. And I lack the ability to truly see what is here? Well, we don't, because we have the evil eye. Equipping the eye, suddenly a three-eyed rainbow mushroom illusion appears. Another hint. I wonder what happens if we eat some fungus here. Now, just because I love it so much, I'm going to give you a refresher on how to make mystery fungus, which is not necessary. You can use any fungus, but I wanted to show you anyway. Now, all we need is a mushroom from the surface, which will kick onto the desert sand, then just smother it in toxic sludge, and then simply bruise it a bit to release its liquid, which will mix with the sludge and sand to quickly convert the surface of the desert into mystery fungus. A tasty delicacy which you can store in one of these handy boxes. Back at the platform, after eating a bunch of this fungus, the reality has shifted, which introduces us to the new fungal shift mechanic. Once triggered, for every five minutes spent under the influence, a material will transform into another material. In this case, worm blood has either changed into another material or something else has changed into it. We'll be using this mechanic in a strategic way later in this quest. For now, re-equipping the eye causes another book to appear from thin air. Notes on Grand Alchemy Among the great alchemical endeavors, there are some that, while not equal to the great work, nonetheless are revered greatly for the deific potence they instill to whomsoever succeeds in harnessing their power. The one I am to discuss calls for a seed of great promise, hidden deep within the soil of this earth. The seed in question being the item dropped by the ghost boss, the sun seed. It glows, full of promise. Other than granting all-seeing eye, when held, this item also converts powdery substances into explosive powder. After traveling to the next platform, high in the sky, and equipping the eye, our second hint appears. Bring the slumbering seed to life by letting it soak in the rays of the sun on the pinnacle of past civilizations. Before continuing with the quest itself, let's travel to the three remaining eye platforms around the world to obtain the remaining hints. The next one being directly to the right of the map room in the desert chasm. The alchemical process requires great fire and heat. For this purpose, lay the stone in fiery earth and bring forth its transformation with great magical heat of destruction. Next, we travel to the vault to find the fourth platform. Once finished, it will sustain life. To this end, its creation asks for a substantial amount of life force. Let the egg engulf 100 of your foes and drink their blood. Lovely. The final hint is in the far right depths of the desert chasm. As a final step, imbue the youngling with the crystallized essences of the four elements. But beware, for the youngling is susceptible to corruptive influence. Alright, now let's get out of here. I'll show you exactly where we are by digging directly upwards and emerging into the desert to the right of the pyramid. Now's a good time to sober up and quickly discuss something about the fungal shift. Remember how I mentioned we wanted to use this mechanic strategically? Well, by holding a flask of any material, there's a 75% chance for that material to be used in the next shift. 
So we can influence the event in order to possibly change our blood into a material that doesn't leave a stain. This will be very important later, so just remember it for now. Okay, so let the seed soak in the sun on the pinnacle of past civilizations, meaning the top of the pyramid. By holding it up here, you can already see the light. Just put the seed down, and a transformation happens. One that immediately begins to deal curse damage, which you should take as both a hint and a warning. The Sunstone. The essence of the sun crystallized which is fairly large but can still be held and converts powdery substances into pure fire. If you don't yet realize what we're in the process of doing, don't worry, you'll soon see. To bring forth the next transformation, we need to create more than five explosions at once. So I'm going to use a bomb with divide by 10 for this. First, let me just make a little nest for the sunstone since it resists gravity a little bit and I want to wedge it in there. All right, now lay those bombs on top of it and make sure to get some distance. A transformation happens, creating the sun egg. Now's a good time to mention that from this point on, things are going to get incredibly deadly. So you're going to want to have saving grace, both fire and explosion immunities so the aura around your creation does not kill you, as well as as many extra lives as you can stack. Trust me. Once you're sufficiently powered up, the next phase wants blood, so let's indulge it. The easiest way is to sacrifice eggs. After a little while, a transformation happens. Using the Spell Lab mod's No Death Mode, I'm gonna give us a closer look at our beautiful sun baby. Just remember not to play in the sun without adequate skin protection. For the final transformations, we're going to need the elemental stones. The best way to reliably obtain these is by first obtaining all the essences, which I have a video on here. Just keep in mind that the essence of air is no longer inside the moon, but instead in the western cloudscape. Then we want to locate the Essence Eater Stone in the Snowy Wasteland and destroy it. Doing so will remove the essences and crystallize them in the form of all of the elemental stones, including the Poop Stone for the Essence of Spirits. I'm actually going to recreate our Sun Baby up at the moon since it's very helpful to make it up there for a little later in the quest. Now, each time we throw one of the stones into the Sun Baby, it gets absorbed and our child grows slightly larger, more energetic, and more luminous. After tossing in the Ukka Skivvy, it begins shooting bolts of lightning in random directions. So having electricity immunity also helps, but at this point you really should have all immunities because we have created the new sun. It is done and it is gone. We checked off two steps at once by creating the sun up here, which, being a small star, is extraordinarily deadly. It constantly bombards us with high-energy particles composed of the aforementioned fire and explosion damage, with curse damage at its surface and Midas damage at its core. In other words, try not to touch it, because you will get burned. We're not yet finished, though. If you're lucky enough to have a seed in which you can obtain another Brimstone, Thunderstone, Waterstone, and Earthstone, you can complete the quest quote-unquote easily by simply creating another sun down at the Dark Moon. As above, so below. The new heart of the world is at balance. However, we're still not finished, because what was meant by susceptible to corruptive influence? Well, remember the poop stone? At the moment, it'll just be destroyed if thrown at the sun, so we'll have to actually get it to take it from us by flying into it. Let's first get this thing centered, because we're going to want to trigger both secrets instantly. And that's because something went wrong, and we've created a supermassive black hole, which has a tendency to drift off. Whoops! Moving the Dark Sun is not the easiest thing. Definitely don't go inside it. That's very ill-advised. Yep, it does unimaginable damage inside. See you later, son.
An interesting note is that while the new sun turns everything to lava in a large radius, the dark sun turns everything into poisonous, ominous liquid. And now, if you're not lucky enough to be able to obtain two sets of elemental stones, you'll have to do things the hard way, by physically moving the new sun and or dark sun from one moon to the other. Yeah. And that is why I tell you to, if possible, attempt to fungal shift your blood, whether it be normal blood, oil, or slime, into a substance that doesn't stain, like worm blood or vomit. Then, stack a bunch of stainless armors, at least 10, 15 or 16 if you want to be ultra safe, by going to enough parallel worlds to break the perk reroll machines. Which happens after 38 rerolls, so you have to go to 6 parallel worlds and load in all of the holy mountains first. Then you start rerolling and grabbing the perks you need. After it's broken, you can reroll as many times as you want for just pennies. I didn't get so lucky with the fungal shift, but here we go anyway. Glass Cannon's HP reduction will reduce the sun's Midas damage, then have an infinite source of healing as well as sped up black holes to move the sun. You can also use the coup to carefully pull the sun around, though it's not as effective as the black hole method. Here we go! Immediately get the first part done by creating the sun directly in the center of the moon. Then, you shoot black holes at it from the direction that you want it to go. I actually recommend trying to go around the work instead of through it because you do not want to be polymorphed during this process. Eventually, you'll get it all the way down into the mines, though it does have a tendency to bounce off of seemingly invisible walls, so patience is definitely required to survive this quest. But experiencing the awesome destructive might of the sun firsthand might be enough to spur you on. It was for me. Finally, you'll get it down to hell. And then, the moon. As above, so below. But yes, I was extremely happy to finally have that finished. The prize for completing this? At the moment, just two pieces on one of the tree pillars, but more might be coming. I'll let you decide whether that's worth it for you. It is a lot of fun, because it is also kind of the ultimate challenge in the game right now. Speaking of tree pillars, I've been working on a video covering all of them for a while now, but I'm holding off on finishing it until after the next main update. Anyway, thank you all very much for watching. I hope you have a great day out in the sun. Happy Noiting.